Um, why don't we end with this? Number one, what or why are you excited about Faith Over Fear? And, and what's your final tip you know, for someone? If you had to throw out one tip that hasn't been mentioned today, doesn't have to have to do with anything we've talked about. And we'll start with Anthony. Yeah, I'm excited for the event just to be around all the incredible speakers and learn. Um, me, I love to learn. Uh, I could tell you guys, a lot of people, they get to high levels in a business and they think they know everything and they wonder why their business starts going backwards over time. I'm still very young in this game. I learn every single day, um, learning about my faith even more. That's an exciting thing to me, even on top of my business stuff, right? That's an exciting thing. Me and Ray actually talked a little bit about this previously when I seen him at the A&MP event, but just like both, both aspects, right? The business aspect, the spiritual aspect, having that all come together. I'm just excited to learn, be around people that have more life experience than me. They teach me things. Uh, I can learn from their, you know, mistakes and I hopefully make the same mistakes, right? That, that's, that's what mentorship is about. That's what learning is about. So I'm excited about that from the event and to be around, of course, all of you guys and all the other speakers. But uh, what I want to mention is someone someone wrote it in the chat. So I'll just take what they wrote in the chat. They, they asked about prospecting, right? And they said, how many people do you prospect a day? And I always say someone who's part-time, you probably want to do at least two a day. And if you're full-time, you probably want to do four to five a day. Like That's probably what you should be doing. For me, though, I actually don't even think about it today. That's how often I prospect, right? Um, and I've been in the profession now for a little over a decade, and I've averaged about five to 10 personal enrollments a month for a decade. Okay. And that's not like trying to go recruit. That is just naturally five to 10 a month. It's been the same thing for the entire time. Okay. And how has that happened? It's because people are always in the pipeline. And I don't think people talk about this enough. The pipeline is always filled. What do I mean by that? Let's say I go to the gym today and I meet someone. Okay. I'm not prospecting that person to get them started in the business. I'm just building a relationship with that person. That person becomes someone I know. I have a contact now. They follow me on social media, whatever the case may be. That person today, my goal is to not get them started in our business. But guess what? Two to three months from now, that person could be joining my business because I added them to the pipeline. And someone two to three months ago that I met could be joining right now. So mm -hmm. the pipeline is everything. And I think a lot of people, they, they're like, oh, I want to go prospect today or I want to go recruit today. And they're not getting the instant gratifications from their efforts but understand you're compounding it. I always say in network marketing, when you start working, you're not gonna see the fruits of your labor till at least three, four weeks later of what you've been doing correctly for that time to start compounding that correct activity. So um, that's that's how I always do it. So my pipeline's always filled. There's always new relationships. I'm not you know, pitching people on the spot. And I can tell you when it comes to this profession, every way that we market is a tool. Okay, just think about this real quick. Your social media is a tool. You know, you in person, you're a tool. A flyer in the mail is a tool. A business card is a tool, whatever the case may be, right? But let's just say I meet someone in person today and I build some relationship, okay? I'm not talking about my business, what I do, et cetera. They go find me on social media. Guess what? My, my social media has just edified me to that person without me even saying anything to that person. You see how like one thing could play the role off something else and it could benefit something else. And that's why I think don't be one dimensional. Like there's something that might work right now, but in a year from now, it could be gone. Like I remember during the pandemic, you know, during that time, uh, social media, TikTok specifically, people in my business, 2020, 2021, they were selling on TikTok. Like you've never seen anything sold oh, yeah. on the internet. The, the amount of sales that were coming through TikTok were like insane, right? Well, guess what? Now the algorithm's not as unique as it was at that time or as beneficial to them financially as it was at that time. Well, you got to evolve. If something's not working like it used to, let's get on something else. Let's learn, learn something new. And you guys all know two to three years from now, there'll be a new social media platform that pops up that becomes something pretty hot. That's just how the world is. It's always evolving. So just don't be stagnant. Don't rely on one thing. Be multidimensional. Have a lot of tools and understand everything benefits each other and always have the pipeline filled with new people. That's just my little tip. Amen, man. Amen. Powerful. Ed, what do you got, man? I would agree with the first part of what Anthony spoke on. I was just looking at some of the other questions. Really great question about choosing a home. I think you have to figure out for yourself, again, what is it that you want to build and create and what are your priorities? For some people, it's the leadership. Who are the people I'm going to be aligning myself with? And then they look at the product. And then they look at the compensation. Other people may look at the compensation first and then the product and then the people. 
it really depends. There was a young lady that asked the question on what your specific priorities are. There's no right or wrong. I know people that are successful and they're money driven. They may even be questionable with some of their ethics at times, uh, even though they're, you know, for the most part, good people. But that's what that's what works for them because they're being authentic to themselves. Other people, they're very much attuned to who am I aligning myself with? And is it a product that has legs that I can see for 10, 15, 20 years, bringing value in the marketplace? And most compensation plans are going to work. Uh, I, I, I've never understood when people say, oh, well, we've got the best compensation plan. I, I've never understood that, that line. So to the young lady in that question, I, I really believe it. it's an opportunity for you to get greater clarity on who do you want to be in this industry? Who do you want to be? what values and principles are most important to you and go live that. Mm, love that. Love that. Jason. I'm excited for uh, faith over fear. I think, I mean, I love the, the name, the title itself. I think a lot of people live in fear. I think a lot of people choose to play small. I think a lot of people choose to be mediocre. I think that there's a, an addiction to a poverty mindset in the world. And I think it's driven by fear. And I think that uh, very few people know what it's like to live in faith. I think that the people that come, I think what you'll be shocked. I think that you'll be amazed. I think that you'll see something you've never seen, or you're going to re-see something that you need to see again. I think you're going to hear something that you've never heard, or you're going to hear something that you need to hear again. And for certain, you're going to feel something that you've never felt, or you're going to re-feel something that you need to feel. It's going to allow you to get over the fear and into your faith and walk towards your destiny and understand that you've got value and you've got worth. The thing I tell people all the time is you got to learn how to ride the wave of life. I have a wave on my hat. I got a wave back here. Waves, they come, they go. They're going to crash down on you. You're going to have ups. You're going to have downs. You're going to win. You're going to lose. And in the you know, scoreboard of life, you chalk up more losses than you do wins. And that's just the reality of life. And so you have to learn how to ride the wave of life. And coming to an event like this, being around people that have had wins and had losses and understand faith over fear uh, is going to put you in the driver's seat of heading after what you might deserve. I think that you deserve, you're going to be reminded, you're going to be reminded that you deserve to win. You're going to be reminded that your family deserves to win, that your teams deserve to win, that your community deserves to win. You got to know what it feels like to win. You got to be around other people that are doing it. You got to be around people that have lost before and pick themselves back up, that don't allow fear to take over them, that allow themselves to walk through faith, allow themselves to be driven by their purpose, allow their passion to come out, allow, allow themselves to understand through self-awareness that you're going to have to go through self-management. You're going to have to do something for yourself and you're going to have to get out and get after it. And you need a group of people that will hold you accountable to going and doing exactly what you're called to do. And I, I can't wait to be there. I can't wait to see the stories. I can't wait to hear the challenges that people are going through. And I can't wait to see what people do afterwards. And just remember, just remember to play the biggest game you have, you can, you can possibly play. Most people play not to lose. Most people play to cruise or just play to compete. There's no competing with anyone. If you're competing with someone else or you're comparing yourself to someone else, you're allowing someone else to dictate to you what God put inside of you. Nobody can tell you what you're capable of except God. And I think it's the biggest game you can possibly play is mm. to play full out what God has put inside of you. And we're going to unpack that for you. We're going to empower you at Faith Over Fear, and I can't wait. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Rob, I just feel inspired listening to everybody. I mean, if you guys don't feel inspired to be better human beings, and this is the difference between listening to music in your car versus a concert, right? I mean, there's a huge difference. You can't explain it. Like people come to the event, they're like the event was so good, just like it maybe a great concert. Oh, what about it? Oh, the music, you should have seen the smoke and you should have seen like what they were wearing and the, like you can't describe it. You just can't. And I look at this event and there's, there's a phrase that comes to mind that I heard years ago, decades in days. Mm -hmm. In a matter of days, you're going to have decades and decades and decades of information, but also collective synergy and energy. Mm -hmm. And if this is just a small, small, teeny little appetizer, you can imagine how you'll feel. And what I love, and I feel, you know, Ray knows a little bit more and maybe we'll talk about it there. But like, for me, I feel beyond honored 
mm. to have the opportunity to speak here. I mean, like you guys have no idea how excited and honored I am. I have a crazy schedule. Be gone in Europe for 15 days, get back for two days. And he asked me and I'm like, yeah, I'll be there. I didn't even think twice about it because that's how honored I am. And I, I hear something that I believe is missing that Rave's solving is when we talk about faith over fear and we talk about God, I want to finish with this. There are three versions of yourself. There's a public version. It's like the first date version, right? Like greatest day of your life. Well, let me get that door for you. Like listening perfectly and complimentary. There's the private version of yourself. And, and Garrett, without even meaning to, talks a little bit about it. The hangry version, right? The hungry, angry version that only your close family and friends get to see when they're like, whoa, back the truck up. Why are you in a bad mood today, Right. And that's only like the private version that the close friends and family get to see. And then there's the secret version. And that's only you and Heavenly Father. Not even your partner, spouse, or best friend truly knows the secret version. Now, we can safely assume probably someone like Gandhi, right, or Mother Teresa, that the three versions of themselves were very closely aligned. But what Ray's bringing to the table here with all these incredible speakers and the theme is helping you to more closely align and improve mm. your public, your private, and the secret version of yourself, which is next mm. level happiness, progress, and leadership. And what you'll find is you be, as you become a better human being and a leader, you're going to impact and influence more people. And the money will be a byproduct of that. So it works so much more together than I think even a lot of people realize. And that's why I feel like it's such a missing piece and, and just so inspiring and exciting and so bold because so many people are so scared to speak up on their beliefs. And so uh, just just honored to have so many friends that, that are so willing and are going to do it happily and, and share so many insights. And the other thing is, are you, are you sure like it's 18 months? Because I haven't missed reading some sort of like spiritual reading in like 16 years. And I swear, you know, the Bible better than I do. Holy cow. This is this guy not a, a genius, like how he knows all this stuff. I'm like, wow, like, geez, next level. I love it. Uh, too kind. Thank you. Um, I mean, it, you know, it's I can't brag about any of this stuff. You know, it's a combination of how God wired me. He just wired me to be that dog with a bone kind of guy. And it's Holy Spirit. You know, I just, I spend time in the word every day and, you know, I seek understanding. Uh, but thank you. I, I appreciate that, man. Mm -hmm.